Hello there and welcome to the bathroom of the dollhouse where all the pontificating gets done for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Derry Goldschneider and you Stelfers for March 9th, the day of the Space Voyager. That's right. Here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of the Space Voyager. We have us what appears to be, that's right, some kind of a tree spore, it looks like. Something off, say, like a sugar gum tree. Though it kind of looks like the Sputnik uh, probe, if you like, there, too. I don't know, a satellite, perhaps, more properly. That said, visual representational image aside, not altogether all too important. I just like folks to see what kind of dynamics going on here on the page outside of the camera eye line there, if you like. That said, what is important around here is it is March 9th and hence it's somebody's birthday. So if your birthday is March 9th, I just want to say happy birthday. That's what's important around here. But if this video finds you late, I don't know, days, weeks, months, whatever the case may happen to be, well, I hope you had a happy birthday in that instance, all right? That said, a lot of folks like to join us randomly to celebrate or just see what they can see. And if that's the case, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I get started with the redirect, something I'd like to take a few minutes to do, and that is roll some dice. That's right, this is the Diecast Birthday Broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake, but I do so more importantly... For synchronicity's sake. And here I rolled us a four and a five for a nine. That's right. Now, what is synchronicity, you're probably wondering? Uh, well, my friends, as I hear it told, the universe or the higher powers that be, if you like, are apt to put things in our path to help us manifest our goals or realize our aspirations. But a lot of the times as we get out into the world, we're very narrow or singular of focus. We often have the blinders up to what's going on around us. So if the universe is apt to put things in our path, well, we might not lend them much credence, all right? So that said, this is kind of a exercise to help you take those blinders off and hopefully start seeing the things the universe is putting in your path. But how do we do that? Well, we need some kind of a sign that's say mutually agreed upon between us and the universe so we can't help but notice it, hopefully. That's right, your daily numbers. Now, you don't have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. It's probably ideal you take your own pair of dice in, in, in that regard so you can ascribe uh, directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. You're essentially letting the universe take the wheel and drive, if you like, all right? That said, at that point, you just pick out a place maybe near and dear to your heart or some place maybe you haven't explored before, and you set off, all right? You let your numbers be a guide, if you like. That said, make sure you take those blinders off, because you never know. Outside of the numbers, the day might start to take on a little bit of a theme, all right? So you got to be open to what's going on around you. Start soaking things up like a sponge. Let's take the visual representational image, for instance, all right? You know, something that's kind of got those spikes on it, the uh, the the spore, the pod, if you like, that come off a sugar gum tree. You might start to see such things, tree seeds, pine cones. You know, I know that doesn't sound too uh, outside the realm of possibility, uh, it being, you know, the cusp of winter or whatever. But that said, you might start to see them in really unique ways, all right? So say maybe you start seeing bronze statues of pine cones or pine cones on, the, on those uh, staircase banisters, if you like, all right? Otherwise, you might not have been really looking for as much. That said, that's just the visual representational image. It could be anything, so you want to be on the lookout for as much. It could also just be the, uh, you know, an advertisement for as much. Hey, you got some pine saw on the side of a bus bench there. Hey, maybe they happen to have a pine cone as part of the advertisement. So I would just say that is another sign the universe is with you on your, sh on your side there. It's trying to show you you're on the right path. That said, maybe you get after this first leg of your journey, your first directional value time limit. Maybe you're not seeing very much, all right? That said, I often like to tell folks just to take a step back and see what's going on around you. Maybe you happen to notice something small like you're on old a 45th Street, all right? The numbers again. Hey, you know what? I'd take that as a sign. You're still on the right path. And maybe no sooner you get ready to roll yourself a dice. Hey, maybe the number nine bus pulls up, all right? And maybe that pine salt ads on the side of it there, all right? That's again, another sign you're on the right path. So I would say maybe get on the bus, all right? Even though you may not like to ride. Maybe you just so happen to have perfect change in your pocket for the fare, all right? So these synchronicities, things you might not take notice of starting to stack up if you like all right 
coincidence, you may say. All right. Hey, I think they're kind of the same thing. All right. So maybe get on the bus and uh, maybe you don't want to ride it too long. So you roll your dice to find out how long you need to be on this thing. And maybe no sooner the dice roll comes out. Let's say it's nine again. All right. And maybe you look up and you happen to see somebody who's got like a shopping bag with the number nine on it. Or maybe they got the, the Beatles album, the single with the number nine revelation on it. Right. Hey, it's things like that. I would take that as a sign that maybe that's the individual to follow see when they get off the bus all right same circumstance too maybe you're in uh outside in the environment and you're not seeing anything uh that's particularly grabbing your attention all right hey you know what something like that could stand as an example is your white rabbit to follow all right somebody with that beatles album walking down the street hey you know what roll yourself a time value to see how long to follow them for but give them a little bit of a buffer you don't want to startle the rabbit if you like they might take you off path or but you know what if they happen to see you see that you're following them maybe they'll confront you about as much you know what take it in stride again like i said show them your dice maybe show them this video hey i wasn't trying to stalk you or nothing like that it's just you were this fascinating individual in the sea of otherwise blase individuals so i had to see where you were going at least for the time limit on my dice and they'd say you know what that's crazy and like i know hey it's it's on this guy on the internet it's not my fault and you know what they say yeah that's crazy too but what's even crazier is it's my birthday too all right yeah, i often like to use that example because you know what it seems outlandish but i'd say it's perfectly within the realm of possibility and yet another little synchronicity to stack up what's great here too they might be apt to join you on this journey because again it's their birthday as well and what's great about that is that the more people that are involved in these particular endeavors as i've heard told focusing on the same outcomes you're apt to beget greater results all right so I think you get the idea for synchronicity. Let's dive in with the birthday read. That's why you're here. All right, your month is March. Your day is the 9th. Your sign is 17 to 19 degrees Pisces of the Pisces 2 period specifically. And your quality and element is mutable water. All right, March 9th, the day of the Space Voyager. All right, those highly conceptual visionary individuals born on March 9 are concerned with examining and exploring the space around them, either mentally, physically, emotionally, or spiritually curious about almost anything. Uh, they are not satisfied until they get to the root of any issue or problem. They have a pronounced dislike for all forms of affectation, authoritarianism, and condescension in others, and endeavor to remain natural in their approach to life. Because of their high idealism, they are generally on the side of the underdog and tend to be protectors of the poor and the weak. And they themselves, however, are powerful individuals with a highly developed personal magnetism. And their psychic abilities are also strong and they should therefore trust in their intuition, which is most often sound. Highly developed March 9 people rely heavily on their instincts, and although no one would deny their mental strength, in many cases they choose to go against the odds, logic, and what appears true in favor of what their sixth sense tells them, particularly when it comes to relationships and crucial life decisions, it says in parentheticals. And those sometimes accused of living in another world, in fact, those born on this day understand a great deal about how the daily world works, but are able to see through any given situation to its essence and potentialities. Whether labeled as spacey or flaky or not, many March 9 people have a more elevated or detached point of view than the average person. And thus they make valuable advisors, since they so often present a viewpoint that the person seeking counsel has not yet considered. And March 9 people often experience a conflict between their stable, nurturing side and their desire to be free, to travel, and to let their minds roam over dreams and ideas. And if they lock themselves into a position of heavy personal responsibility to, say, the family, job, or social position, they may find themselves frustrated a good deal 
of the time. And part of the problem is that since they are highly capable, often easy, uh, often <laughs> others often rather easily grow dependent on them. And they must be careful to leave certain doors open for themselves through which they can periodically escape and express the adventuresome, far-out elements of their personality. In March 9, people usually go through many major changes in life, moving from one job, place, or relationship to another. Well, it's very natural to them, since they enjoy variety and are wary of attachment. And people born on this day who have not gotten to know themselves at a deep level, who know they are unusual but have never really expressed their true self, are often surprised to discover one day how truly powerful they can be. And once they begin to realize and exercise this power, those born on this day will experience and enjoy a whole new dimension in their lives, but perhaps also face many new difficulties. And indeed, they may feel the urge to drop their more mundane duties, reject a formal life of compromise, and reach for the stars. All right, I would say this was a highly fascinating birthday breakdown. I don't know how well-rounded it was. It seemed to be pretty uh, intent on focusing on a particular theme. But I only make mention of that because ever since Back Past Capricorn, a lot of these birthday breakdowns have been very hyper-focused on the theme in a variety of different ways. Uh, so I just like to let people know that so they kind of know what's going on in the book, the dynamics therein. But again, I don't think that takes away any kind of value that was imparted today with the breakdown. Uh, that said, I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just read, maybe make some connotations with the period at large, things I found fascinating, and just kind of go over things again so we can further pound down the, uh, the relevance of what's going on. But do a little reiteration, if you like, for context as we get on with the read. So let's dive in, shall we? Uh, March 9, the day of the Space Voyager. You're highly conceptual and visionary people, and you're said to be concerned with examining and exploring life in your proximity, also in any given manner that you can, to say mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, so you have the capacity to basically cover all the bases, I would say, and get to the root of any given subject uh, to uh, otherwise satiate your, uh, your need for curiosity, I would say. Uh, you're also said to have a marked dislike for affectation or those artificial behaviors that other people may put on to impress others, all right? As well as authoritarianism and condescension, all right? And with that in mind, it makes a certain kind of sense that you'd have a concern for idealism uh, through such concerns. Uh, and it doesn't always translate over to a uh, concern for the underdog or protecting the weaker individual or the underprivileged to that end in society. Uh, but here it seems to as per the breakdown. Uh, so you actually stand out to a certain extent in that particular regard, I would say. Um, uh, even though idealism is a common trait in this particular period. It's just yours focuses on taking care of others to that end, it sounds like. Uh, having said that, a marked personal magnetism and mention of psychic abilities have also been rather prevalent in this period, and when such things are rarely mentioned in the book otherwise. So uh, a lot of folks who are more grounded, who don't believe in such things, you're apt to, to poo-poo everything that's been said just because that facet may come into the, into the dynamics there. But uh, I only make mention of it because it's not something that's often focused on. So there may be some grain of truth to as much uh, if it's being brought up. Uh, this also extends to being accused of living in another world and being rather, that's being rather common for the uh, period as well. Uh, but having an understanding of how the daily world works to say, uh, I, or I would say rather, is a bit more of a rare anomaly, all right? Uh, which is interesting for a variety of reasons that we'll get here to shortly. Uh, but the main takeaway on my mind, or at least by my mind, would be uh, this more elevated or detached vantage that you have versus the average person, they said, which speaks to being objective, I would say, uh, and uh, which it turns out is a quality most folks in this period have 
uh, they have to work it towards cultivating. But it sounds like you have that kind of baked into the process there. So uh, I would say that stands out. Uh, but having said quality, uh, this then speaks to the conflict that may be baked into the bargain. As stability, they said, doesn't often play nice with the realms of dreams. Or maybe they didn't say that, but I've seen it here come up in the book, all right? Uh, so I think it's a great suggestion to have an escape outlet through which you can focus on the more far out elements of your nature or the things you may be curious about that others may think is a little bit outlandish. All right. Uh, suggestion many uh, born on this period don't necessarily get because escapism can present as being self destructive, all right, uh, or ultimately limiting. Uh, so mind you, don't let that reliability stifle your creative spirits, I would say, or your more fantastical side uh, I mean, of your nature there, all right. Uh, you may just be sacrificing your truer self in the bargain there. And uh, uh, so a more, f also maybe the more fulfilling aspirations that you have, all right, uh, which is a rare reality for those born in this period. So you have a little bit of conflict baked in there, it sounds like. So uh, we'll get into that and why that may be rather as we move on to your numbers and your planets. That's right. Okay, let me get the book centered for you so I don't fall too far out of frame. All right, those born on the ninth of the month are ruled by the number nine and the planet Mars. And the number nine is powerful in its influence on other numbers. As any number added to nine yields that number, e.g. five plus nine is 14 and one plus four is five. And any number multiplied by nine yields a nine, okay? E.g. nine times five, 45, and four plus five is nine, all right? And March nine people also exert a strong influence on those around them. And the planet Mars is forceful and aggressive, embodying male energy. And March 9 people as Pisces are ruled by the planet Neptune. A Mars-Neptune connection grants powerful and even magical qualities, usually involving psychic and highly intuitive abilities. All right. This was a little bit of a copy-paste job insofar as they put the math stuff in there with the number nine to kind of correlate the idea that you're also influential in certain regards. Uh, but they did have to kind of change things up as they relayed the, the uh, Mars-Neptune dynamics. So they had to personalize it for you here a little bit. Uh, what does that mean? Hey, I just like to make note of it so folks, are, so folks know when they focused in on, on certain folks there keep saying folks. Anyway, let's move on to the numbers and planets, what I had to say about it. Uh, number nine in the planet Mars for God of War-like energies and an ability to exert strong influence on others. All right. But interestingly, Neptune is also said to impart a, a magnetic kind of influence that allows you to dissolve barriers with absolute and rigid natures, at least as mentioned in other parts of the book there. So you're imbued with this both active and otherwise passive kind of uh, influences pulling at you as far as I can discern, uh, which uh, may not be something that's come up before, I would say. Neptune is also said to rule dreams, visions, and illusions, and most folks ruled by Neptune. Uh, they're keenly focused on higher ideals, a little bit of romanticism in there too. Uh, they're also imbued with the psychic abilities, as they said. But with Mars, apparently, they those things might be heightened or just intuition, if you like. All right. Uh, but here also, there uh, a lot of the folks born in this period, they tend to have their head up in the clouds, if you like, in one way of speaking. So they they don't necessarily come to come down to the ground all too often. But here you have that objectivity kind of baked into it, I would say, because Mars is one of the more earthy kind of planets. Uh, but if you have the capacity to have an understanding of day-to-day -day matters and objectivity, if you like, uh, I would say that uh, that kind of draw is going against the odds, all right? I'd also posit that your Mars energy is significantly influencing your Neptune qualities in no, part, in no small part, uh, both for better and worse, considering the conflicts that you may just face, all right, as we're kind of presented in the 
breakdown there. Even if they didn't necessarily mention they were conflicts, it was kind of, if you read between the lines, sure seems like it. So because of that dynamic, it may just explain why you've got these things going on. Uh, this Mars power, this sense of taking on responsibility, it may just be washing out the more idealistic aspects of, uh, you know, chasing after your dreams and such, if you like. And so they kind of endorsed you bucking those kinds of things a little bit. Uh, the book, by and large, is all about balance, uh, also maintaining a certain amount of moderation, as well as cultivating self-awareness. Writ large, earmarked uh, themes brought up. So uh, I would say here, too, those are kind of baked into the bargain, even though they didn't necessarily bring it up. But they might as we move on. That said, talking about synchronicity, what did we roll? Oh, number nine. That's right. How about that? That doesn't always happen. So in any event, that's been your numbers and your planets. Let's move on to your tarot. All right. One of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies. But hey, it's here in the book. And sometimes we can make connotations with things in the breakdown, further endorse the ideas that come up with the card. Uh, but sometimes not. We'll just have to see. All right. So let's get into it here. The ninth card of the major arcana is the hermit, who is usually depicted walking with a lantern and a stick, and he represents meditation, isolation, and quietude. And the hermit also signifies crystallized wisdom and ultimate discipline. He is a taskmaster who motivates by conscience and guides others on their path. And the positive indications of this card are stick to purpose, profundity, and concentration. But the negative qualities include dogmatism, intolerance, mistrust, and discouragement. All right. Now, what did I have to say about your tarot card? Let's get back here into the notes. Uh, the Hermit, who represents meditation, isolation, and quietude, and symbolizes crystallized wisdom and ultimate discipline. All right. All of which I would say speaks quite aptly to the day. All right, not just the suggestions and how to further realize your higher evolved state, uh, you know, ostensibly through meditation, isolation, and quietude, right? Uh, but to say applying yourself towards self-awareness, all right? A through-line watchword, like I said in the book. It also applies uh, to the qualities you're said to possess without cultivation, all right? Or that crystallized wisdom and discipline in the knowledge that you derive from your curiosity and your approach to understand and observing the world. Just that innate ability it said you had to do as much. And I'll also say that dedication to taking care of other people or looking out for the underdog, if you like, all right? And I reckon that's just the tip of the figurative iceberg with as much. But be mindful of those weaknesses that they brought up, the dogmatism, intolerance, mistrust. Sometimes folks get just a little bit of power and they let it go to their head. They start moralizing from on high, how to do this, how to do that. So that responsibility you, you get in the bargain might start to run away with you. And with Mars in the, in the mix there, with the aggressive powers, I would say doubly so. You got to be aware of it, that it, it might start to take hold of you in some negative fashion. So you got to buck that uh, tendency. Uh, discouragement also comes up. Sometimes we start to wallow in the self-pity if things get kind of down in the dumps. If you aren't realizing your dreams and your aspirations, maybe you don't even know what they are, but there's that wanting need for as much. So you start getting discouraged. That can translate to anger. Maybe you start taking it out in other ways. So it's a vicious cycle, I would say. But we have the tools in front of us, even if they're just hinted at within the breakdown. That said, that's been your tarot. I thought it was a pretty apt card in those regards. But let's move on to your health. All right, your health. Let's get into it here. Those born on March 9 must under, or, or, excuse me, must avoid undermining their health by placing themselves under too much stress and shouldering too many responsibilities. They must be aware of periodic depression, sometimes the result of an inability to express their creative talents, or better their career circumstances. Variety in surroundings, proper diet, and physical activities, healthy relationships, as well as freedom of expression, of course, help greatly. And those born in this day are people who really need to free up the more vibrant side of their nature and be appreciated for who they are. Uh, thus, their choice of partner is indeed crucial 
to their happiness. Now, a talent for food preparation is not uncommon in this day, uh, or on this day rather, but March 9 people must be aware that they are not taken for granted, despite the tremendous satisfaction they get from pleasing others. All right, this was a pretty interesting health breakdown here for you today, or entry if you like. They uh, typically have a pretty tried and true boilerplate format, and they plug in the various elements and the information there. Uh, but here today, they kind of had that format there, but they were pretty loosey-goosey with it. A lot of the stuff that they might otherwise save for the breakdown, they put here in the health. Uh, but uh, I might be burning down everything I have to say in the notes. Let's get back into it here. Uh, your health. Uh, you must avoid shouldering too much responsibility on account of stress, all right, or, or taking on too much stress on account of the responsibility there, if you like. Said a different way, all right? I'm sure it has a different meaning. Uh, highly unique entry this period, I would say, just because Neptune concerns so much of the, the loftier ideals and such, not necessarily taking on responsibility. Uh, which also goes for depression stemming from a repression of your creative powers, as we said. So maybe take note in those regards, I would say. Uh, diet, exercise, relationships, and anything to promote satiating your curiosity are said to help and makes a lot of sense if the breakdown applies. And this is something of particular note, doesn't often get seeded into the... Uh, the health breakdown. I would say it's kind of a cultivation and a earmark for self wellness. All right, and that's part of health for sure. So I can justify why it's in there. Like I said, it just doesn't typically present that way. Uh, but uh, not a typical health entry, like I said, insofar as how focused it is on the breakdown info. Uh, but personal wellness is huge, like I said. Uh, food preparation recommendation, uh, that's rather common for this period. It's been so since maybe Aquarius, uh, maybe even a little bit of Capricorn too. Uh, and I was kind of like, why, why doesn't the specific foods for your diet present like it has in periods past? Where they really drill down on what foods to avoid or incorporate into your diet. And I would say ever since uh, back about uh, the uh, period of Capricorn, they were largely getting away from that. And for and again, a, cultiv a cultivation of uh, f food preparation comes into the dynamics there. And my uh, idea was because you're incorporating fresh ingredients, and so you're getting the necessary foods there. And then there was just one day, I think it was during Aquarius, where they said that's what it was. You start to cook and you incorporate the fresh ingredients. So, you know, I'm, I'm right on the money once in a while. So pretty interesting in that respect. Uh, as for Neptune days, though, this comes up quite a bit. But also there's a couple days where it comes into there because the people are fixated on the aesthetics of the, not just the preparation of the meal, the plating of as much, but the, the beauty just that comes with cooking. So for them, it was fulfilling in that respect interestingly enough uh, but no specific foods mentioned for you here today uh, that said they didn't necessarily pick up on a uh, specific kind of exercise either and for Mars days they typically get vigorous uh, exercise recommendations sometimes even combative sport recommendations so they can excise those God of War like aggressions and tendencies here I would say I didn't really get the idea that uh, enters in or that factors into your life so much. But if it does, there you go. And work out some of those aggressions with your exercise. So here I would think it's maybe just moderate to vigorous because Neptune's in there kind of bringing things back. That said, I've seen some Neptune days get a vigorous recommendation because they got their heads way up in the clouds and they need to be brought back down to Earth. So uh, salt to taste, whatever you think's necessary, I would say, because the range of dynamics there is all over the place. Uh, what else do I have to say here? So again, don't get taken advantage of uh, insofar as you, you're apt to lend yourself and maybe spread yourself too thin as you're helping other people. They brought that up and uh, uh, be moderate to make sense uh, of and you know, temper the balance of Neptune and Mars there if you're within the exercise aspect there. Just repeating myself here, but I want to make sure I get all the notes there for you. Don't lose anything. That said, that's been your health. So let's move on to some advice as if we haven't gotten a lot of that already. What else do they have to say here? Get to know yourself better, okay, and decide what it is you must do. There are times when it is best not to define yourself in terms of others. All right, and exercise your personal magnetism, all right, and have the courage to go as far as you can. 
All right. Hey, I like this one. Okay. They uh, seem to get up in there, up there in the clouds themselves a little bit, but here nor there, I still thought it had a lot of value to it. That said, what did I have to say about what they had to say? Let's get into it here. And bear with me. My writing's tiny. I had to put it in a book itself. Uh, they said, get to know yourself better. Again, self-awareness. Got to cultivate as much. All right. So be the hermit. Chase that curiosity. Focus on your own personal fulfillment, I would say. Uh, at least once in a while. All right. Uh, everyone benefits if you are happy, all right? So mind your personal welfare to that end. Uh, decide what you must do, they said. Uh, I'm assuming with regard to cultivating self-awareness, okay? I didn't get the idea that you were an indecisive individual, uh, at least insofar as maybe you haven't decided to chase after your dreams yet. You can't decide on that aspect, uh, perhaps. Uh, let's see, what else do they have here? So decide what's important, I'd say, and pull the trigger on it, all right? Uh, uh, there are times when it is best not to define yourself in terms of others, they said. Uh, so ask yourself, what's the value add that you provide for yourself, I would say. Okay, not just what others think uh, is good for you there. Or what you're doing for them is what defines you. Uh, maybe your fulfillment is derived from caring for others, for sure. That's, that's happened plenty of times in the book. Uh, but again, uh, there can be other things too, all right? It doesn't have to just be that facet. Uh, remember, they also stand to benefit as well if you're a higher evolved individual, all right? Um, let's see here. Exercise your magnetism, they said, all right? Draw others in. You don't have to do everything yourself, okay? Um, what else? Uh, you can share what piques your curiosity as well. Add value to other people's lives. So you find that dreamier, something to chase in your off time perhaps while, while you're not caring for others. And maybe they want to find out about it as well. Now you're providing that value add to their lives in the bargain. All right. Uh, they said have the uh, co was it confidence, the, the courage rather, to, do, to go as far as you can. Uh, it's hard to pull the trigger sometimes because we're thinking about it too much. We're thinking about how hard it can be. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes that's the hardest part. And once we pull the trigger, hey, you know what? There we're off to the races and now we can't help but do what has to be done to get it done. All right. Even if it's hard. So sometimes that psychological component can be what stands in our way. Just don't let it. All right. Just get it out there and do it. Okay. Attack the pull-up bar, as you say in the Marine Corps. Sometimes just staring at that bar. I know I got to get some pull-ups in. That would be the mental uh, thing that was holding you back. All right. From getting those pulls in. So attack the pull-up bar if you like. Pull the trigger. All right. That's been your advice. So let's move on to your meditation that's right it's your birthday you get something to think on the most interesting person you ever meet in your life may be yourself all right i like it i like it a lot okay one more time the most interesting person you ever meet in your life may be yourself Okay, uh, your birthday, your meditation, I'm not going to throw my spin or interpretation on it for you. It's just for you, all right? It would kind of defeat the purpose of it being a meditation if I told you what it, what it meant. And, you know, things can mean a whole variety of different things. It just depends on what it means to you. That said, your meditation in a can, as it were, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right, let's hold up the objective mirror, see where you got the girth, and we otherwise maybe a little more atrophied within the metaphor there that's right your strengths your intuitive your visionary and your conceptual that's right but your weaknesses now oh what could they be your weaknesses oh let's hold up the objective mirror once more but flip it to the side that blows up your face that's right maybe shows off the things you're otherwise a little more superficially insecure about within the metaphor that's right your weaknesses your self-sacrificing oh detached and overstressed oh <laughs> excuse me we got that one over the stress let me get the uh transition better because of the cough messed me up you know, oftentimes i like to argue that our strengths are going to help us overcome our weaknesses all right if there's something that are plaguing us but i also like to make the case that our weaknesses can be strengths in and to themselves just depends on the situation and how we use them all right uh what's the case to be made for your strengths helping you improve upon your weaknesses your intuitive 
intuitive. You know, you got those psychic abilities, they said. You know, we can go on instinct. You're going to have a natural propensity to understand what needs to be done, what avenue needs to be gone down in order to address your weaknesses. You're a visionary. Hey, you know what? You're going to dream up some awe-inspiring method to get after it. Or maybe it's not awe-inspiring, but you're seeing things others aren't necessarily seeing. Sometimes it can be just that, the simple things that other, you know, sometimes the simple things are hard to identify, all right? You're also conceptual, all right? You got an idea for coming up with the bigger things, I would say, all right? And how you can approach figuring out your weaknesses. That, so it sounds like it'd be quite the thing to watch to see you improve upon your weaknesses, all right? But what's the case to be made for your weaknesses being strengths? Well, let's try to dive into it here. I've been messing this up for like the past week and a half. I'm not making the strongest cases, but hey, you gotta give it the old college try, all right? Self-sacrificing, all right, you know, as a weakness, they, they made their case for it, all right? It's taking you away from realizing your higher evolved sense of self, okay? Um, so there's the weakness in it. You're taking yourself away from yourself. But and what is that as a strength? You know what? You're able to compartmentalize your own life in order to get things done, all right? And you, you know how to make uh, time for things that you see as important, I would say. But that also leads to being overstressed, right? So how's that a strength in and of itself? Again, you're able to pull that to the fore when you need it, all right? You have the, the shoulder mass to, to carry that load, I would say. But again, don't let it take over, okay? Because I'm sure as you know, it can uh, affect you adversely, all right? So we know how to use those as just bringing that brute strength to the fore and the time and commitment it takes for as much. Uh, but they also said you're detached, okay? Hey, you know what? How is that a strength? Again, you can take yourself away from what's important and put it onto this thing that needs to get done. Uh, maybe not things that are important, but you can compartmentalize even further and in a different way, I would say. Um, so, <clears throat> again, all those things, definitely I saw why they say they're weaknesses, but I can also see why they're strengths, okay? Uh, that being said, um, I often like to say don't get rid of your weaknesses altogether, all right? Because they're a fundamental part of what makes you who you are, I would say, okay? So, uh, not too bad. Those weren't the most difficult weaknesses to try and rally and turn into strengths. Uh, I could, probably could have made a better case, but you know what? This is a one-shot, one-take. We deal with what we got in front of us. But that said, your strengths and weaknesses in the can. Let's move on to those born on this day. When we get into those born on this day, not only do we get to see who shares your company, but something I like to do is take this as a moment to maybe try to drum up some inspiration for figuring out our own passions, all right? And I would say that this is a day where that is especially important, all right? Assuming you haven't done so for yourself already. And I bring this up because all too often in life, I get out and meet folks and ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And I think that it's just very important that we have something that drives us, a purpose, if you like, something that we're jumping out of bed doing backflips to get on with our day to do, a passion. But a passion requires time, energy, and effort uh, in order to figure out a lot of times. Sometimes just figuring out what we like to do takes time, energy, and effort. And at the end of the day, we can't necessarily carve that out for ourselves, especially for something that specific, all right? It might seem trivial in a lot of cases, so we're not going to put the time in to do as much when we could otherwise just uh, turn things off for the day and rally for work tomorrow, all right? But you know what? That starts to, that starts to turn into a vicious cycle where you're just living for the job, all right? Living for the things required to do the day-to-day -day routine, and you know what? That's no fun. I think we need to have something that drives us outside of all those things. So let's look at those born on this day and see if we can't start cultivating as much. At least um, put the bug in your ear for as much, all right? Because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you drive it after a purpose or something that you find fulfilling. So let's dive into it, shall we? Those born on this day, we have Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet cosmonaut and first man in space, and it says, sadly killed in a test flight, all right? But living after that passion, right? Uh, ostensibly. All right, I would hope so, okay? Moving on, we have Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian navigator, the Amazon discoverer, and the America namesake. Interesting, I didn't know that. 
We also have Leland Stanford, a railroad builder and a California governor, senator and founder of Stanford University. How about that? Bunch of founders today already, right out the gate. We also have Bobby Fischer, the only American-born world champion grand chess master. Our grandmaster chess individual, all right? Uh, <laughs> so this is an older book that may have changed who's to say. We also have Ornette Coleman, a jazz avant-garde saxophonist, as well as a violinist and a composer. Well, how about that? Those aren't two typical instruments that people will cross-pollinate between. Interesting. Uh, we also have Irene Pappas, a Greek stage and film actress. Raul Julia, the film actor. Jackie Wilson, R&B soul singer, songwriter, and says heart attack on stage and left him in a coma. Jeez. All right, we got to pick ourselves up from these dour kind of, uh, kind of instances. All right, moving on, we have Mickey Spillane, detective story writer, Mike Hammer, uh, Mike Hammer creator, as well as Kiss Me Deadly. That must have been one of the books that involved the Mike Hammer character uh, for Mickey Spillane. Okay, moving on, we have Andre Courages. I'm probably saying that wrong for sure. A French fashion designer and the mini skirt inventor. All right. Joseph Franz Gall, a German phrenology founder. I think that's the study of the shapes on the skull, right? We also have uh, Vyacheslav Slav. Slava, <laughs> Vyacheslav Slav. Sorry there. Uh, Molotov, a Soviet foreign minister sent into exile and responsible for the Molotov cocktail, or at least it was named after them, the firebomb namesake. Uh, we also have Marashiro Shinoda, the Japanese film director of Pale Flower and Double Suicide, and was also a producer. We also have Samuel Barber, a composer of... Uh, Let's see, Floyd B. McKiss McKissick, a uh, civil rights leader and the core director, it says, and a lawyer as well as a Baptist preacher. And we also have Michael Kinsley, a TV journalist, Trish Van Devere, a film and TV actress, Danny Sullivan, the an auto racer, and it says cart champion and seventh all-time money winner. Robin Trower, a British guitarist responsible for or part of Procul Harem, and finally Keely Smith, a film actress and a singer. And let me tell you something, the names today got me. They often do, but today for sure. Those Russian ones is what got me today. There's also a French one in there too. So I make up for it on my side of things by butchering some stuff. It's not done in malice. It's just hooked on phonics. This isn't the best tool for pronouncing names. And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting. I'd probably know how to say his name if they named the firebomb after his first name, not not just Moltov, all right? <laughs> However you say, Vaya Salov, or whatever, whatever it was. Any event, uh, my mispronouncing things, that's not the focus here. What's the focus is there was many a people who founded such things on this day, so you're in very good company, and I would say you got the potential to do as much yourself. If you just take the time to figure out as much. So, like I said, if there's anything I can hope for you on your birthday, it's that you're driving after something like that, all right? That said, that essentially rounds out your birthday read, except to say your season is winter, your sign once again is Pisces of the Pisces 2 period specifically, and your quality and elements is mutable water. And this has been March 9th, the day of the Space Voyager. All right. From the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description, right above a personal message I like to put together for the birthday boys and girls, ladies and gents. So if you're interested in checking out the message, head on down there for that. If you're interested in picking up the book, saving yourself the hassle of typing it in in browser and helping the channel out in the bargain, well, hey, just go after the link there in the description above the personal message. That said, book having been related, that's not what's important here. What's important, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday. All right. So once again, 
happy birthday, okay? If everybody else that joined us randomly or are here to celebrate the birthday, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed yourselves, took something of value, even though it's not our birthday, and I hope to see you for your birthday read, okay? And lest I forget before I take us out, the synchronistic number nine for March 9th, okay? Get out there, let the universe show you it's with you on your path, stack up some coincidences or some synchronicities if you like, and you're apt to understand why I brought it up. All right. But uh, like I said, once again, happy birthday. OK, I want to thank you for the pleasure of your time. It was a privilege to celebrate your birthday with you. All right. And uh, once again, happy birthday. All right. Get out there. Take care of yourselves. Start drumming up a passion if you haven't already. And if you have already, hey, the hat I'm not wearing is off to you. Just keep after it. All right. And uh, you know what? Make sure you're after your own personal welfare. OK. Uh, if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, in addition to everything else, it's that you're chasing your dreams, okay? Take care.